Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal and noise. Day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at Amazon reInvent 2015. All the keynotes are done, all the news is out there. People are getting ready for the big party tonight. It's our third day, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with two guests here uh, in the ecosystem of AWS uh, from uh, two different businesses. Brent Sesco Rovetta, VP of BizDev at Freshdesk, and Mark Wright, Director of Partnerships and Evangelism at uh, Ayla Network. Yes. Ayla Networks. That's right. Guys, thanks for joining. Get a little rocky Hello, on the third day, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, we're here. Um, Mark, let's start with you. Internet of Things, um, you guys have a platform that's not hardware, it's software. Right. It runs in the cloud, but IoT is one of the things. Talk about um, your take on today's announcement news. Right. And then what your business does. So our business, what Ayla does is we allow OEMs to easily connect uh, their things to IoT and cloud in order for them to see how their things are actually being used in the field um, and how users are using them, right? All in, in order to improve it. So we make it very easy for those OEMs. The great announcements today, uh, the CTO, Amazon, the new services that are being offered, it allows us to now use um, things that are provided by Amazon rather than having to build it. And that's what we're providing to our customers is we're giving them now a higher level platform that they don't have to build that they can just use. So the OEMs aren't really in the software cloud connect business. You kind of do that for them, is that Absolutely kind of the take? Absolutely correct, Absolutely. And then you use the goodness of Amazon, all the things that Werner Vogels announced today, yes. Kinesis and Connect, all that, kind of close the loop for the data. Absolutely, yeah, so very much like a ladder yeah, yeah. there. And, and the end, end goal is for these OEMs to just easily connect their things because they want the data, they want the intelligence, right, yeah. of, of so that So we were, we're having some commentary on our intro about how Amazon's catching up is what people were tweeting. IoT's been around for a while, I mean sensors and stuff. But what they're doing is interesting, I want to get your take on this, and how, how evolved is the industry? Seamlessly connecting all the devices and not worrying about the siloed data and or devices. So you might sensor something up there, a farm piece of equipment here, a piece of a hand sanitizer there. So the industrial side of it as well as the devices right. are very diverse. Yes, yes. So the fragmentation is no common platform. Yeah. How, is that a real issue and, and is Amazon's solution a good fit for that? So first thing on what you said, and I think what was what's on the Twitter feeds is that Amazon's catching up. I don't I don't see it like that. Amazon has a very powerful, their strongest player in this business. They were providing infrastructure, and they were allowing companies like us to build on that to provide a solution. Now something even on one of the other uh, commentaries that was made interviews, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, Grace Lee was saying, you know, people are learning from that and then they're doing more. So people that have been in this, just like Ayla, all the things that we've learned in bringing OEMs to on board, now we can provide to other OEMs and kind of best practices. And I think that's what Amazon is doing and they're seeing, because they've been in this business now for, for a while as a leader, they're seeing how people are using it and now they're making it easier for their developers and their partners to, yeah. to go even further. And mobile, certainly, they got a lot of experience with mobile devices. Yes. Which is essentially you could be, you say as a proxy, it's an internet, it's a thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a connected device. So now the difference between a farm equipment and a phone, really not really to the network, it's a device. It's a device, yes. And, it, and they're taking it one step further. So just going mobile, um, that's just remote control, right? And so people have been doing that for some time, just putting Wi-Fi on it. But Amazon allows going further, not just remote control, but actually gaining data. And even with John, with the John Deere interview, or the John Deere um, uh, presentation, right, it's no longer just the tractor, but it's working with the trusted advisors and the farm managers to determine what should be planted, right, what's the value crop, that's really the inter internet of things re uh, result and the, uh, you know, the, the return from the cloud. Francesco, I want to get your take on it. Internet of things, people are things. I, mean, I used to read to my kids, thing one, thing two, that famous book, we probably all probably read that Dr. Seuss book, but the, th the thing is people are connected to the internet and your company deals with customer service. And those are people, those are people connecting in real time. Talk about what you guys do in Amazon and what you guys have and how that's relating to all this because I mean, the lines are blurring. A machine's calling in with data, people are calling in, getting support. 
Talk about what your company does and how that fits into the, the Amazon uh, infrastructure. Yeah, I'd love to. Freshness provides a cloud-based uh, customer support software. It's a software that uh, support agents have in front of them when they interact with uh, end users, whether they are you know, ordering a product, they need more information, they need to change a reservation they made for a vacation, or within a company, they need to upgrade their laptop, their telecom devices. And we are truly multi-channel. So end users connect with agents uh, through mobile devices, through email, and even social media. And what we can expect in the future is these interactions to be multimodal. So IoT could be one of them. Um, we announced a couple of weeks ago the acquisition of a company um, called Frilp, which stands for Friend Help, which focuses on uh, natural language processing. Um, even if it's a consumer-based communication, the technology behind it is going to be powering a lot of the features and products we're going to announce in the future, allowing basically consumers or users to find answers uh, from each other to common problems. So talk about that. I mean, it sounds so easy to say, oh, just it's a different channel, so, so just move that over. It's pretty complicated when you think about the different channels of data. So you got customer support, say it's text or social. Merging the data is not a trivial thing. Talk about the complexity and what is, what is Amazon, what kind of tech is there to help you? What we love is the fact that uh, often in AWS, to some extent, enable that, uh, technology, even the most advanced technology, is being consumerized more and more for use by not only end users, but also businesses. And that's one of the key drivers or values that we bring to our customers, um, is the usability. The ease of implementation, ease of use. Our decision five years ago when we launched uh, to run on AWS um, was very strategic because we really wanted to focus on building amazing products innovative products uh, and do that without having to worry about the How underlying How many customers do you guys have? We have uh, more than 50,000 customers uh, globally. And in small, medium-sized businesses or large businesses, what's the makeup? A combination of both. We have uh, young startups, we have uh, small, medium businesses in growth stage and larger companies. And why do they buy your product? Is it easy to stand up, easy to implement? What's the value proposition? Price, is it just the pain point is today there are a lot of solutions, uh, whether it's on-premise, legacy. Uh, what we find also is uh, uh, a lot of customers use uh, uh, in-house built solutions. But over time, with new innovation, new technology, new software, are not scalable. Okay, so they get stuck with a moment where uh, usability becomes an issue, scalability becomes an issue, and then we come into play with an interface which is yeah. very easy to adopt and easy to understand. Some connectors here and there, some integration work. Yeah. Mark, I want to get your take on security. Yes. So Internet of Things brings up security question. Right. Are my devices secure? You know, the old story about the HVAC system, people backdooring in from some device or subsystem yeah. in the company. This might open the door for security. So have you been following, are you guys doing anything in security relative to the IoT? Because you know, I can see the buy-build decision on OEM. Right. Okay, do I build it or do I do I partner up? Right. So I think that's probably key. Absolutely, it, and it's, a, it's very front and center with customers as well. And the key here is people cannot be lazy and there's no reason for, for them to be. There is the technology available. Um, from a hardware perspective, there's a technology available that we can use enterprise grade security in the uh, technology we're using to connect, right? In the transport, we can, there's, there's um, technology there that's easily used to encrypt the, te the, uh, the data that's going up. So we can use, we can implement AAA technology even in IoT things, right? We can authenticate, we can authorize who gets access with role-based, and then we can audit what's going on. The problem is if people get too lazy and they're building, you know, a, a uh, you know, it's a water sprinkler, so I don't need, I don't need security. You know, it's, you, you've got to, you, you've got to so take that extra step. you guys provide security? Oh, absolutely. We build that in with the connectivity solution we have with our partners. So I always um, look at Amazon's opportunity. It's very easy to get, in, get into Amazon. Customers like it. Um, but I want to ask you guys a question. Why, why are you guys all in with Amazon? Why are you guys part of their ecosystem? What attracted you guys to Amazon? Right. Well, from, from our perspective, from Ayla's perspective, it had all the tools that we needed to allow us to come to market quickly with a solution that was very secure, 
Um, you know, it, it's very scalable. We can take a manufacturer from you know proof of concept to you know a ramp in production of hundreds of thousands uh, in a very very short period of time, right? And they offload all of the um, the management and the uh, the uh, you know the, the heavy lifting so that we just have to manage it from a platform level, right? Why build that infrastructure when you can, when you can use this and provide a, a great uh, uh, platform? Why, why you guys? What I love about uh, our decision to go to the US is yes, on one hand uh, is the focus on uh, building products and letting the pros uh, manage infrastructure and the back end. The other one, uh, and I'm wearing my pure BD hat, is, uh, as you mentioned, the ecosystem. Not only per se, but also the innovation that ecosystem can bring, uh, that can be shared with us by AWS and the partners. But the other thing is a network effect, because uh, extensions, integrations, uh, uh, new features, new products, can be brought to us and to our customers uh, thanks to partnership with, uh, partnership with other companies. In fact, we announced this week an integration with uh, AWS in our uh, uh, service desk ITSM product called Fresh Service, where it's possible for a DevOps team to manage their AWS assets from within the help desk without having to bounce back and forth between accounts. So what are, the, what are some of the benefits you guys got with Amazon? Because one of the things I'd like you to share is um, something I commented on the opening, which is the ecosystem is a big opportunity for Amazon. And they, I won't say they've done a bad job. They just have been so busy with the product and they've been growing. The ecosystem's now also now growing. There's a drafting right. effect. Right. It used to be a kind of select party, just kind of knew who they were. Some people were afraid to jump in. Maybe they're going to get eaten up by Amazon. Kind of like the old Microsoft days when people are afraid, you know, embrace and extend or that kind of, you know, dominating, we're going to eat you up. People were afraid right. of Amazon. You know, mm -hmm. wait a minute, they might do what I'm doing. That's kind of going away now. So talk about the ecosystem today. What's it like? What benefits do you guys see? So the, the, there's two on that. One is by Amazon continually developing, by, by bringing on state-of-the-art features, right? It allows their ecosystem partners to also advance, right? That's a key uh, point. Then the other point we have, even with, uh, Fre with Frederick and uh, his business, the, you know, when you first look at it, we look very disparate. But at the same time, because we're all on AWS, uh, as our own customers, our OEM customers now need support, customer support, as they're, as they're going into new fields in IoT, it makes us easy for us to, for us to partner as well, right? And then the, for the end customer, in our case the OEM, they're getting uh, a much more vertical connectivity on this information on their whole business intelligence and just their business uh, operations, right? Now from customer success into their device, and then we have other partners where we can then even take that into the business intelligence application. The bottom line is, are you guys making money? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, good ecosystems make a multiple of what the, the enabler makes. Yes. So, I mean, back in the glory days of the mini computer days, you know, and then client server, and the client server was really, to me, the first, you saw that channel develop where, you know, the, supply, the, the services were making mm -hmm. 10, 15 X that. Yeah. Are you guys seeing that as well? Oh, very much. Very much. In fact, the beauty, I mentioned before, uh, kind of a network effect. I think there is a, the fact that AWS, to some extent, is a common denominator, a common language yes. amongst uh, the different partners of the ecosystem, allows us to understand each other quickly, yeah. the challenges that we faced, but also, you know, the solution that we can provide to our customers. Very often, we go hand on hand yeah. with the AWS folks uh, to our customers, and uh, we present solutions and some of our customers are frightened by the change, but yeah. they see how the, the advantage, the benefits are jumping into not only cloud, but solid, reliable solutions. Well guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE, I really appreciate it. And the word solution provider is a word that's been kicked around for many, many years. But now with Amazon, to me, it's, it's a dream because you can actually provide solutions with the stuff that they have yes. and tailor it to the customers. And I think that to me is a great opportunity that they have. And, and I hope they don't blow, Amazon, don't blow this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, um, at the end right. of the day, it's all about making money, right? The providers, yes. need, the ecosystem needs to be profitable. Yes. So yes. Uh, we are here, talking on the ecosystem at Amazon reInvent. We'll be back with more after this short break. I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE.